a shop that. They do the thing going on. <laughs> the whole of Portmore and the whole of St. James. Remember we, when we're gone, we live forever. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Christian Foster. I am a second year medical student at the UA Mona campus. And in today's video, I'll basically be sharing a few things that my first year of medical school taught me and some of the things that I'm probably going to be changing going into my second year. Um, and a little disclaimer, some of the things that I will be changing um, is subjective to my journey, obviously. So um, it may not apply to your path in medical school or which whatever you're studying in university. So take everything with a grain of salt because this is kind of like, you know, tailored to my specific journey. So, yeah. All right. So for my very first point, um, I want to say that time moves a lot faster in medical school and I say this because I had an experience of UE before medical school and it was just nothing compared to the pace that medical school goes like um, in SciTech I had time to basically like because I was scheduling my own classes so I had days where I would literally have I think Thursdays I barely had any classes and I would just have a lot more time to see me go in and just do whatever I want but that was just not the case in medical school and you learn that very very early on um, because your classes go from around 8 o'clock to like 4, 4 or 5 and you have to study sometimes in your breaks and you have to study after class and it honestly just seems like um, there's no time to do anything for like what I mean I'll touch up upon like other things outside of medical school but it feels like you don't even have time to be studying and being a, a student so yeah that's one thing that i learned um in my first year the time it time management is key because um you just don't have the same timeline as your counterparts who would be in other faculties i don't mean this in any shady way it's just that's just the reality of our curriculum and how fast-paced it is all right, so for my second point, and this point is extremely important to me because I was very stubborn in accepting this, and is that resources will drown you. And when I say that, I mean it because when you enter med school, you'll realize that there's just a million different places to get information from, whether it's textbooks, or um, like online source, YouTube videos, question banks, tutor services, there's a whole bunch. And growing up, well, especially at community college, my kind of like tactic to cover like material was to just buy a whole bunch of textbooks before school started. And I would just use the textbooks. I would literally use every um, resource at my disposal. And honestly, it only worked at that time because the volume of work we covered back then was basically like half of what we were doing now. And it, it was easy for me to balance life and be covering and then be use, using YouTube videos and books and a whole bunch of different resources. But the reality is it's <laughs> you cannot do it in med school. You literally cannot. Yeah, so like in my first semester, my tactic for studying was Okay, well, I'll go to class, I'll write the notes from class. Uh, if I miss class, I will literally write the words, the notes, word for word from the lecture slides, which is just not making any sense, and you don't have time for it. And then I would go and study my big textbooks, and then I would go and watch a YouTube video. And then, like, at first, like, for the first week, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah this will work. But, like, well, mind you, the first week that I started this, and then after a while you realize that it's just not feasible because like I said the first like from the first point you don't have the time. You literally do not have the time to be covering this. And in my second semester I started to change a lot of it. So I started using Anki. If anybody doesn't know what Anki is, Anki is like a free flashcard app and it basically has this algorithm that allows you to, um, well, it, it basically tells you when to study essentially and it, it tells you when to study specific cards. It's really good and I started using it and I would say that I wish I started earlier. Like that's my only like kind of like um, 
take away from Anki. I, I wish I started it earlier. I don't know, like, there's no fault with Anki itself. It's a really good app and it works. It's just, I wish I started a little earlier because um, it's something that it's, um, it uses space repetition. So you need to be doing it over a long period of time. You can't just start it like a month before your exams. Also, I, um, I invested in a question bank that was like catered to students at my school. But the thing with this is um, you have to be careful with using the question bank resources because um, as much as they're extremely helpful, especially since the questions will be similar to the questions you get on your actual exam, um, you still need to be studying like nitty gritty details because that's how they catch you off guard in these exams. They ask you the, the little points you're like, mm, let me just not study that tonight. That's exactly what will come. So you have to be cordial when you use these resources. So yeah, um, going into my second year, I'm still gonna be using some of the resources that I use going into my second semester. So Anki, definitely, that will stay. Um, <laughs> I've been using the big textbooks in the back. I'm not too sure how much I will use textbooks next semester. I think um, I'll be just using it, you know, to get an overview of certain topics and stuff. But generally, I don't, I don't really see myself um, studying textbooks for long hours and also lecture slides. So the third thing that my first day of medical school taught me, gunners. Now, most medical students probably know what I'm talking about when I say gunners. But for the people who don't know what a gunner is, a gunner is basically just the epitome of like toxic student. They just like the worst. They always want to be on top. They never share resources. They always want to just, they're very uptight, they're very, some of them, most of them are arrogant. Gonna suck. <laughs> Gonna suck. And I, I feel like this is an important point because um, in medical school, you realize that, like in life, everybody ego be your friend. Everybody ego be cool with you. Everybody ego be, it ego just be, you know sunshine and rainbows you go encounter people that don't want to see you succeed for gunners to succeed others must fail and that is just gunners <laughs> gunners don't want to see you do better than them they will literally do anything they can to make sure that they're at the top and it's important to me especially because you need to stay away from these people who will like be trying to drag you down like imagine you ask somebody for like let's say a book a pdf of a book or something because you can't find it online and some and the person say boy i have that whole time the person have that and they're just holding that and they want to share it with you because they know if they have it they go get better grades you understand so it's like gunners you have to stay away from gunners because you, you will encounter a lot of them and on the odd chance you become one but yeah stay away from that mentality of toxic um studying and you you mustn't have a life if you're doing if you're at the top of the class hour no 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 stay away from gunners please all right so now on the flip side of <laughs> toxic studying um I want to say, like, for my fourth point, um, study groups are extremely helpful. And study study groups is something that I overlooked a lot because I thought I performed better by, like, by just trying to do everything on my own and not asking for help and stuff. And I realized that just because of the sheer volume that, that has to be covered in medical school, you need to just try and find a way to you know share it amongst people so that you know when you when you're meeting your study groups you're not just stuck at in like for example before my study group because my study group um we only really started being very active in the second semester because we had a lot of courses and it kind of got overwhelming just trying to learn all the material on our own so we started meeting a lot more frequently but my first semester, it was very difficult for me to just try and get all the work done because 
I found myself being very overwhelmed when I didn't understand the topic and I knew that somebody else could help me but I just had way too much pride to ask so I was just like you know what let me just struggle and we'll see what happens but it affects your grades it affects your mentality it affects everything and then when we started really studying together in second semester everything changed my whole mentality towards studying and and medicine and and school my grades and everything it just changed and i realized it's because what you don't know somebody else is guaranteed to know because if you have a study group of six people so one person is bound to know the thing you don't know and there's always something that you can teach as well and teaching is a way that you can you know actively reinforce information that you're learning so it there, it's just there's many benefits to being in a, stu- in a study group so just if you if you're struggling at any point just consider it right. so for point number five i want to say that your study area makes a big difference it's a small point but it's pivotal regardless um just having a quiet study area a nice study setup a clean environment it helps a lot because especially with online school we're no longer on campus so you're gonna be spending a lot of time by your desk so you need to have an area where you know you will want to dedicate a lot of hours to studying because if your study environment is uncomfortable you'll be you'll be less likely to sit down for long hours which is required you'd be less likely to want to go there you would just feel like the whole point of studying like studying on a whole is pointless so so for the sixth um point um the sixth thing that i learned is that you should never have too much pride to ask for help and i say this because it's inevitable that you will struggle you will encounter topics that you don't really understand and it's easy for you to start drowning and i just feel like that whole um idea that you should just be struggling to try and do everything on your own is just so outdated and stupid like i feel like at this point in time you should be asking for especially with online school like you need to be asking for help you need to be looking for tutors looking for study groups looking for just random people in your class that will help not gunners gunners will not help but you know what i mean and the, our program has this thing called a med sibling so your med sibling is basically responsible for guiding you through your first year well i mean throughout medical school but because there will be a year ahead of you but they guide you so that you will um, know the different um, you know different online resources different physical um, textbook resources um, they just help a lot and you need to be asking them for help because they've gone through it they would have just gone through it a year ago and it would be fresh in their heads and they would be willing to help you so you should never be at a point where you scared to ask people for help like you should never have too much pride to ask for help because this is a team effort the whole thing everybody in your year group it's a team and um think about it you're gonna end up in a situation where you're gonna be in a hospital and you're gonna need to coexist and work with other people you can't just expect to do everything on your own you understand so that's why asking for help when you need it is essential Okay, so for point number seven, and this point is extremely important. Medical school or not, you need to take note of this. Sleep is important. Sleep is the most important thing to you right now. Because there's this stupid misconception that medical students don't sleep. And if you're not getting three hours of sleep, you're not a med student. Every morning, I wake up three hours before I go to bed. That way, I maximize my productivity out of the next day. Most people don't want it enough. I want it. Damn nah bullshit none of that shit is realistic you need to be sleeping you need to be getting more than five hours of sleep or five five is sufficient that's what i get and that works because you still need to make a certain level of sacrifice for you to be covering the work that you need to cover but at the same time you gain one hour of sleep and you're bragging about it but you are retaining the information you're tired in class you can't focus you're not doing any extracurricular activities it's not worth it like it's literally not worth it you need to be sleeping how are you gonna learn how are you gonna function and be happy and a human being if you're not sleeping you understand i feel like it's just 
when I was entering, well, when in UE, when I just entered UE, Cytec, a bunch of my upper levels were like, yeah, you don't need to sleep. Sleep is a concept. Sleep and no concept. Sleep, you need sleep. <laughs> you literally need it. Okay? All right. So for my eighth and final point, I feel like this should be a good closing point because it's something that I've said on my channel a lot and I think it's just in life like I didn't only start doing that when I got to medical school it's something that has been with me forever and it's balance balance is more important than a grade and I say that because you're gonna end up in um, at a point in med school where you will want to make too many sacrifices and I say that because sacrifices are necessary at this point you need to be taking a lot of time out to be memorizing information. You need to be learning some of this stuff because you're gonna go into the hospital one day. And I'm just saying this from my preclinical standpoint, I'm gonna be going into the hospital one day and I'm gonna be needing to apply this information. And I don't wanna ever be at a point where I'm like, well, I really wish I you know, had sacrificed more time. But I also don't wanna be at a point where I'm like, I really wish I took some more time out to have fun. And I think that's important, like not only just the fun aspect of it, um, your life needs to have structure, not only just in medical school, but as a student in general, because it's the only way that for me that I yearn studying and yearn learning. Like, and I say that because when I take time out of studying and I go and throw this course, or I go and play tennis, or I go to the gym, it gives me time away from my books and I start to say, okay, well, you know, I had a nice time out. I had um, fun playing tennis or whatever. But now I need to go back and eat the books. If you just constantly in your books, you will get sick of it. You will lose your love and passion for medicine. And it's sad because you entered for a reason and you want to stay for a reason. So you don't want to ever lose that fire just because you overworked yourself too early. So balance is key. You need to be exercising. Like that's not even a, I'm not even just saying that you need to exercise. You literally need to run. You need to go, you don't need to go in the gym, but you have to be doing some form of physical activity. Even if it's a walk or a jog, you need to be doing something. You need to have a friend group. You need to be speaking to people because like I said earlier, you need to ask for help and it doesn't just have to be academic. You. You're a human being, you will encounter um, situations where you're more emotionally drained and just every aspect of balance is so important. And I learned, I'm glad that I had those characteristics going into medical school, so I don't necessarily have to change anything. I mean, I do wish I spent less time talking to friends online and going out when I didn't need to, but at the end of the day, I'm still very happy that I spent time away from studying and it didn't get to a point where it was toxic and I never, I don't want to do it anymore. So yeah, balance is key, balance is extremely important. So that brings me to the end of the video. I really hope this video was informative. Um, I hope you like the B-roll that I added. Um, and yeah, I, I just really think that um, these things were essential for me to go through um, because you never know, you never really know what to expect going into anything new and you're prone to make mistakes as a human being and the only thing you can do is to learn from them and just pick up on them um, going forward. So yes, thank you very much for watching and I really hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment and subscribe and also share.